Welcome to Template Art. Today we're gonna to do a simple fall pumpkin using colored pencils and acrylic paint. All right, so what I'm using are, uh, well, this is my colorless blender, but we're using Prismacolor Premier colored pencils, but this is the colorless blender. I've never used it, and so I'm gonna try it out today to blend the pumpkin, the colors within the pumpkin. And I'm gonna go for a more kind of textured, um, sketchy style uh line like lines when i draw this pumpkin so yeah right now i'm just going to draw the ribs for the pumpkin and that's the different sections of the that you see on the outside or they're called ribs and um i like the longer the taller pumpkins i just think that they're cool um i actually never really bought a taller one i usually just get a pumpkin but yeah, so since I'm going to draw it, I can draw me a tall one. I think they make cool faces when you see them carved out. I think that's really neat. But yeah, so I'm just going to try to draw my sections or the ribs and see, you know, get a good shape for it and try to get them even, but still not too geometric because it's an organic thing and you want to keep that natural feel to it. And so I'm just going back over the lines just to get an idea and like I said it's I wanted to have this like kind of not, I don't say rough because I don't feel like it's rough but just a not so particular line work I don't know how to explain it or how to describe that but yeah so we got a base and I'm just using a orange pencil obviously but you know just in case um and fun fact that the ribs are actually, they show that there's a row of seeds, where how many rows of seeds there is in within the pumpkin. I just learned that. <laughs> but yeah, so we have a basic shape, so it's pretty good. I like where it's at. And sorry, I have to sharpen this pencil. When you get new pencils, you know, they're like sharpened and they look pretty, but it's not really ever enough to really color for a while. You have to sharpen them because it kind of dulls down really fast. For me anyway, obviously you can see I'm heavy handed and I like to go back over my line, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a longer style, like a longer, when I'm coloring in each rib, I wanna use longer strokes so it gives that length Whenever you're looking at it, it, I feel like it just accents the, the length of the pumpkin. And it just gives it the whole shape a more contoured look, in my opinion. And, and some people may think that it doesn't matter, you know, and that's fine too. Because that's just kind of personal opinion. And it's how I like to sometimes color, especially whenever you can see which direction the lines are going. And now I'm going to add on the stem which is called a pentacle i believe and it actually determines the quality of the pumpkin sorry i was looking at pumpkin facts before i did this <laughs> that's the only reason that i even know this stuff uh but yeah so just kind of you know get it as natural looking and you know darken up areas and, and remember we're going to go over this with acrylic paint as well so I'm kind of using the pencil and the thicker bolder lines as something to use as an accent because I feel like if with the acrylic it kind of blends well and you'll see what I mean when we get there. I mean some of it, most of it will be covered up but at the same time it's still a, a nice, it's just a nice merge or a mesh of two different mediums I, I feel like. We're just gonna shade the ribs. It sounds weird calling them ribs, to be honest, but yeah. And this is just so I can, I feel like for me, this is, for one, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna color it in, but I also feel like this gives me an idea of my highlights and my lowlights and my shadows or my midtones. And not that you have to have all that. I mean, you can just 
color it in however you want it. I'm just kind of explaining as I'm going. That's a pretty good base. And now I just want to go back and darken up some of the edges. And see, I'm not completely coloring it in because I know I'm going to use acrylic on it as well. And even if I were to just use this color pencil, I would still leave a variation of the paper to blend through because it's nice to use that for highlights or just as an area to blend the mediums or to blend the pencils instead of trying to blend them on top of each other because that's how you get that waxy paper materials when you start layering too much pencil. And this is golden yellow, I believe. And and this is yellow, orange, and orange. Those are the two colors that we're using right now. I'm sorry about that. I should have told you from the beginning. But any any orange works. You can make it a purple pumpkin if you wanted. This is, you know, totally your thing. But those are the colors that I'm using. And I'll be using, you know, an orange paint as well with some yellow. Sorry, I have to sharpen this pencil again. It's another new one, obviously. It's from the same pack. All right. And now I'm just going to go in and give it that orange color. I mean, you know, any orange is an orange, but that's just the base hue. And so having those different tones, I believe, is is important to get that kind of realism that you want or just to give it those different values now if i was going for a more illustrative flat look then i would just use one color that's kind of the whole principle in general using different colors helps you bring volume or depth to whatever it is that you're drawing or maybe realism so to speak but you know And there we go, sharpen the pencil again. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. And I said I was gonna save a lot of white space, but clearly, to me this is saving a lot of white space because normally I would like make sure that it was covered and I would use my mediums or medias to add in the highlights if I want it to be very rich in color and bold. And also, it I mean, it just kind of depends on my mood, honestly. There we go. And see, the rips have kind of went away a little, just a little. But we're going to blend this in and try this blender. Well, we're going to use this blender to blend it, and hopefully it works out well. Oh, yeah. I like how this blender works. It's interesting because I've never used a blender before. I would just blend using the different colored pencils, which sometimes it works really well, and then sometimes it's adding another layer of pencil, and that kind of can make, depending on what type of paper you're using, I'm just using a, a Bristol paper. Um, it can actually be too much of the pigment onto the paper, too much of the pencil, or like the wax in the pencil, I guess. I don't know that I would say graphite, not wax, but it almost becomes waxy or like smooth, like, I don't know, I think of wax paper. There you go. And I feel like it's probably a little hard to see on the camera how it's blending, but it's blending. If you follow the pencil, you can see where it pulls the colors together. It's interesting. I do like that. And so I'll definitely use it on something else. And I may actually do some fall leaves in pencil instead of paint because 
I've done them where I'm painting. Obviously, there's another video up if you'd like to check that out. If you're into fall leaves and fol foliage. Because it, I think that would be really cool to do, actually. I did a few last year. And doing this has made me think I want to do some more. And watercolor. So those are definitely two things that I'm going to do some fall foliage in. Right, now we're about ready for our acrylic. I'm using Liquitex Soft Bodies. And I have like a little starter pack of the general colors. Um, this is the yellow. It's a medium yellow. Azu. Azo. Azu, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, and so it comes with six colors. But yeah, we're just using yellow and red. You can use any brand you would like, of course. Now we're going to mix a little yellow, a little red make us an orange and I like to just do this on the side of the palette and I'll just add more yellow if I need to lighten it and you know if I needed to darken it I would add more red but obviously it is red enough and I'm just wanting to lighten it up so it's easier to complement the pencil all right just go in and just you know Give it some motion. Bring it to life. You're going to... Now you're adding the skin or the peel onto it. And it just really boldens it up. Adding that darker orange. And I believe the smoother, solid color brush strokes just give it another level of detail or style. And you're just laying this in wherever you would like. Or what I'm trying to do is, is bring out the ribs and show, the, show that definition within each one. If not, it would just look like a basketball. <laughs> and we'll also, at the towards the end, we'll add in some more detail using... some darker colors to really make it pop. And see, I'm just lightly blending it. And I may go darker, I may add some more. And see, now that I add the paint on, I see where my highlights, some of them, when I'm adding the paint on, it shows the shadows. Or really, it's just kind of boldening the color, to be honest. But, and I thought about using it to where I would just do for, like, do the paint for shadows and do the pencil for my mid-tones and highlights for the most, the majority of it, which it still has that, but in some areas, I feel like, you know, as you can see, just work over them so it has the aesthetic that you want. Like, I'm loving how this is turning out. It's just like a fun pumpkin. It's a pumpkin, that's for sure. And I really feel like this orange is just the right orange. It just was a perfect little mix. I just love the way that these two textures meet and what it does. I just know that I have to remember that the paint will cover up the colored pencil really easily because it's a lot thicker of a sub, like a substance or a consistency.
Something that I love about this filbert brush, that's the style or the type of brush that is, it's a filbert, the shape of the bristles, is that it gives you that nice natural round contour of brush strokes that are soft, but it has the elongated bristles or body of the bristles that allow you to cover more area and, and get nice hard edges, but also still able to get that round softness instead of a hard square or pointed edge like you would with a bright or flat brush. It's, if you ever see one, just pick you up one and try it out. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's definitely grown on to me. And see, I'm just going in with the red because these soft bodies mix really nicely together whenever you're using them. They're not as heavy and they mix well with other paints as well as mediums, but I just love how well they work to work on top of each other when they're wet. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you just add in those shadows, just kind of give, give that more definition. Because whenever the light's hitting it, you get all kinds of variations of tones and different hues, depending on the light. Well, I feel like that would be a tone, but... Kind of light that up a little bit, blend it out. I felt like it was too dark. All right, I believe we're about good with the adding the acrylic. And see, I just love how this come out. It just looks so good. And, and we'll need to add the color in the stem. And also, I want to use a brown to do that and also a brown to accent or to define the shapes further. And see, that what's nice about this, instead of using a black, a black would be too bold. A black also could look good, but for what I'm going for right now, it would kind of be against the grain of the aesthetic that I'm looking for. And a brown is also in the same tone or spectrum of the orange because it's also a red base. And so that's... Just one of the things that I think about. So I'm just going to add the brown in and give it some detail. Just bring a little life to this stem or what's known as the pendicle. 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 I, I don't know. It's it's not pend. It's peduncle. Peduncle? I'm, I'm not. It's a... <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to keep coloring. I just love how this accents, how it just looks, it just, it's so cool. Hopefully yours is coming out good or you're liking this one or, you know, maybe you're just wa watching and hanging out. That's cool too. And hopefully you're having a good day. Go back in with a little bit lighter of a yellow orange and just fill it in because we know it's not going to be completely white because it's a stem of root 
and see that this blends well. Looks like a stem to me. There we go. Add it in. This little detail, you know, because it actually comes down and it's, well, it obviously grows into the pumpkin, but you want to bring those colors down. So it gives it that little bit of realism. And it's just the little details that really can make it stand out. And going in with the blender just to obviously <laughs> blend some of this in or out. Just a smoother, it just gives it a smoother look really. All right, and so I just want to really blend that in really well, and I'll go back now with a little bit of yellow and touch up the highlights, you know, just add a little dash, brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Just give it a little bit more life, you know, kind of blending it out. I think that looks good. Next is the brown, and we're going to use it to add the detail on the stem and start at the top, working our way down. Not too heavy, but just start laying in some shadows where you think shadows could be. And, and not too heavy, just kind of light, you know, and just because you don't want it to be too dark because it's going to be hard to go back and fix. But you want it just to, you know, give it those little details that really make it pop. And, and right there, I wanted to show how it kind of dips in at the top, how it goes inward to the stem. And you see how just that one little bit, that one light line down the rib just gave it, it just make, brings it out, makes it pop. You can really see now how the oranges play a role, the variation of oranges play a role. It's exciting. It's like the, it's almost like outlining, but not really, because we're not going to do bold outlines that are like jumping off the page. We want something that's soft that gives it a, that subtle, natural shadow effect, but also definition, because that's all purpose is to help define the different elements or the different areas. I just love how this brown looks. Now, if I was probably doing this with a background, I wouldn't have my edges this flowy or, you know, just abstract or sketchy or rough as far as like on the outside. But this is kind of the style that I was shooting for because it's just a more textured look and it kind of gives it this lively a little rustic not really and see right here i'm gonna add the shadow and at the top up here 
that's where I, I, I'm sure you can see where I colored it a little bit more. It's where I was adding the shadow from the stem. Because the stem is dark on the right hand side versus the left hand side or the facing side, the front facing side. And we want to get our shadows on the bottom, try to give it that depth. Oh yeah, there we go. That looks cool. So you just really, that helps define that rib. And this is where I'll go back over and make this shadow darker. Because you don't want to start too dark because if the shadow doesn't look like it should, then it's going to be there. And you might not be happy. Instead of coloring the whole shadow, you see I just like touched up that corner to, to give it that I'm here kind of look instead of coloring the whole thing because then it would make it flat. You see, if Whenever you allow color to show through other colors, it really helps with the realistic kind of look. There we go. That's a pumpkin. And thank you for following along or watching this video. And if you like it, please hit the like button below. And if not, then let me know. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And I hope to see you at the next video. And stay tuned for more. Thank you and have a good day.